Now let's address the joint central moments. The word joint means we have multiple random variables. We call that the word joint means that we have multiple random variables. Now the joint central moments, <coughs> it's the expected value. So first we have mu to stand for the central moment, and then we have two subscripts. The first one indicates the power of the first variable, and the second one indicates the power of the second variable. So we have expected value uh, of x minus the average, because it's central moment, and raised to the proper power. And what you see here is the equation for the case of uh, continuous, or the case of given the joint PDF, and you want to find the joint central moment. Now, uh, one of the second order, very important second order joint moments is the mu 2, 0, which is going to be the marginal um, variance of x. We have mu 0, 2, which is the marginal variance of y. Now, mu 1, 1 is what we call the covariance, and because it's important, we're going to use the letter C. For correlation, we had R. Now, for covariance, we're going to use C. It, mean, it means how y and x vary together. If we increase y, what will happen to x? Is it going to increase or decrease in the expectation? So again, the formula for finding the covariance is given by the following. Uh, if you have the joint PDF, the difference is here now um, that for the covariance, we remove the mean as compared to the correlation. Uh, so if you expand the expectation, if we expand this, what's inside and open, let's see what we get. We get uh, the covariance equal to the correlation minus the product of the means. This is very similar to the equation that we had before, um, somehow related to the equation that we had before. If you recall, we had uh, the second uh, moment, the, second, the variance, sigma x squared, equal to m2 minus m1 squared. Instead of m1 squared here, because we have two uh, variables, we're going to multiply them by each other. And this is m2, which is the correlation in our case. All right, now, what if x and y are independent or uncorrelated? What happened to the covariance? If they are independent or uncorrelated, we get the covariance equal to zero. Why? Because if they are uncorrelated or independent, this becomes x bar times y bar, and then they cancel out with this term, so we get zero. What if they are orthogonal? If they are orthogonal, this term becomes uh, zero, and we get the following expression. C of xy equal to minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. Of course, if one of these is zero, again, the covariance becomes zero. So once more, if the covariance, if the random variables are independent or uncorrelated, we get zero. If it's orthogonal and one of the expectations is zero, then we also get zero. Now, in this slide, we generalize for multiple, uh, for multiple variables, and we get for n random variables from x1 up to xn, okay? And if you want to, to get uh, the, the order moment, uh, you remember the order of the moment equal to the sum of all uh, powers. So we can write the joint central moment in a general format like this. So the color just to help out distinguish which is which in terms of power. Okay, now there's one problem with the correlation and covariance. They depend on the original value of the random variable. So if you change the unit, if you use kilograms or pound or so, you get different value for covariance. So if we say the covariance equal to 100 or 200 or so, we don't have a very strong physical meaning unless you go back to the units. So we define what's correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is normalized second order moment. So if you look at the definition here, we, we use rho to represent the correlation coefficient, and it's equal to the second order moment, mu1, or covariance, covariance compared to the standard deviation of the individual random variables. So it's cxy divided by sigma x, sigma y. Now, if you want to write that down, the covariance is the expectation of this product, 
divide by the two sigma x's. And uh, the advantage of normalization is now the covariance coefficient or the correlation coefficient. It comes from correlation, by the way. It comes from covariance, but we still call it uh, covariance coefficient or co call it correlation coefficient. This is not R, because sometimes we get confused. It's called correlation coefficient, when in fact it is uh, the covariance normalized. So as I mentioned, the advantage is that we have uh, the correlation coefficient is from minus 1 to plus 1. And uh, in this graph, we're going to see some examples. You see here the value of the covariance. We start from 0 up to 0.999. The x-axis is x, and the y-axis is y. So if, if the correlation is 0, you, you can see that the points, all the points are scattered. As we increase the correlation in a positive manner, we see that increasing x results in increasing y, and we get almost a straight line here. What if the correlation is negative? We get the following uh, diff opposite slope. For now, on the right-hand side of the sketch, you see that these are uh, realistic values for or data for ladies or for women from uh, the x-axis showing the height in centimeters, and the, and the height is shown on the y-axis. And these uh, points represent some samples some uh, realistic data. So if you look at the correlation, it's, it's a going to be positive correlation between the height and weight, which, which make physical sense. But mind your, you, mind your steps that here, if I say that increasing uh, the height increases the weight, then this is statistically. But if you pick two examples here for these two ladies, uh, increasing the height did not result in increasing the weight. So for specific samples, you cannot generalize the conclusion. Now, when the correlation is negative, it means, here's a minus sign, by the way, uh, here there is a minus sign, a minus sign. It means that we have opposite relation. Increasing x results in decreasing uh, y, and so on. Now, on the right hand side here, I'm showing you some plots of data. And you can see that for all these curves, I would like you to guess what would be the correlation. If this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, okay? Are they correlated or not? Is it positive or not? What we learn, what, sorry, what we learn from this sketch, for all of them, the correlation is 0.7. And this is a warning for you. Don't make conclusions about the data. Uh, don't generalize a conclusion to all samples because although they, they all look different, the coefficient, the correlation coefficient is just one number. So this number could be dominated by one data or could be two different sections with two different behaviors, one going up, one going down. And we're, just, we're just representing that by one number. All right, now let's practice the concept that we learned using MATLAB. In the following, I am sharing with you the MATLAB code. I understand that the font is small, but you can always cut and paste, and I'm going to share the link with you in, uh, below. In this example, I'm trying to generate random data, this data to represent the relation between the age uh, and the weight of, of a given students, for example. So basically, we are generating random age between let's say 17 and uh, 26 that's maybe the the, dis the distribution of students in in, uh, in terms of age at KFUBM of course we have more or less uh, we have usually more but uh, this is just a rough uh, example and here I'm sketching the PDF just to show you that the generated data was uh, uniformly distributed using the random uh, depending on how much data we have fantastic now we are going to generate the y-axis uh, different ways. So we'll, we're going to generate different relations. We'll say, for example, y equal to 3x plus 10, and then uh, uh, y equal to 1 times x plus whatever equation. We have three different examples to try with. Uh, what's y? y is just uh, the weight of the student. So we have the age, which was generated randomly between, uniformly between 17 and 26. And I'm generating y in diff three different ways. In one of the cases, y is totally independent, unrelated to x. It's just random numbers. In another case, 
there is positive relation with 3x and in another case it's a negative relation so this is just for mathematical uh, representation to understand this MATLAB command you, you might be exposed to new um, new commands including scatter histogram or hist3 that will generate a three-dimensional histogram and then we have also a command for to calculate the covariance and the correlation coefficient we have ready commands in MATLAB that that allows you to um, to practice uh, finding the covariance and finding the correlation coefficient now uh, for this specific example you can see here that the age is uniformly distributed we just mentioned and then if you look at the scatter plot okay it's it's filling everywhere that's that's generated randomly again the weight is uniform so we get students everywhere we have large number of data if you generate uh, the 3d uh, histogram you get this kind of shape now if you look at the correlation between the two you get a matrix of uh, two by two that's uh, the correlation coefficient between x and x let's say weight and weight age and age and you expect to have one and one here because the data is compared to itself however the, the uh, these two values are always the same because this is comparing the weight with the age and here the age with the weight so changing the order should not change the covariance or correlation coefficient and you can see that the values here are very small because they were generated uh, independently this is like zero in the next slide I'm going to show you some more uh, examples now in the current slide we, we tried different equations that was the equation for the uniform distribution independent and now for example we have a direct relation between the age and the weight this is of course not it does not make a physical sense just we're trying it so we get a direct relation all the data in the scatter plot are in a straight line uh, there is a, li a linear relation between the age and the, and the weight we're just doing this for demo and uh, in the second example we're just trying to make some relation with some random uh, insertion so you, you expect the correlation coefficient to be one and here you expect it to be something between uh, minus one and one and of course we can get um, for all of the examples I'm just uh, giving some examples here you can get the correlation the covariance between x and y where are these these are vector of data and you can see that the off-diagonal elements are showing negative correlation because of the way we define we define the equation here now if you look at the correlation coefficient okay in the last case you'll find that we're getting very close to zero so ideally we should have covariance and correlation coefficient for every case but then we'll get six of them and it will be crowded and just pick some of them for demo you can enjoy the code and practice getting different relations you can change the relation get different plots change the original data and then look at the covariance and correlation coefficient now this example studied the variance of a weighted sum of random variables this had lots of applications and I picked this from uh, you know these days of machine learning and so on so basically we have inputs and then we have these inputs get weighted and summed. so we are at this stage again this issue of activation function you, you, you would see if you are going for machine learning and uh, other uh, topics but we are at this stage if we have random variables and they get weighted and summed and I'm just showing you a practical example what would be the variance here for example so let x be a weighted the weight is alpha and then x are our input we are summing over all cases this is called a weighted sum and we would like to find the variance of x and the definition of the variance um, is of course the second uh, central moment but we'll start by, by finding the expectation the expected value of x we're just substituting into the definition I'm using red color here too, so that you can trace alpha is not um, alpha is not uh, uh, a, a random issue so that it's, it goes outside the expectation and then we have um, the expectation goes inside the summation uh, the only uh, the only random part here is x so this can be written in that format so the average or the mean of x will be again the weighted the sum of the weighted means now if you go back to x and subtract the mean if you go here and subtract the mean I will get of course 
the variance by finding the moment about the origin because now it's going to have a zero mean so let's go back to this after removing the average so the variance is defined to be the expected value of x squared minus of course x minus the mean squared this is the definition of the variance to go from here to here I'm just substituting so every one of them is equal to this term so because we have square we are multiplying twice now this can be written in the following format it's double summation all right and then again we take alphas outside the expectation what is the expected value of this term what is this how did we define this before this is nothing but the covariance this is the definition of covariance so it's cx i cx uh, cx i xj so we're saying here that the variance of the weighted sum is given by the following relation this is the general formula for any weighted sum now under the condition of x being uncorrelated note that what comes next here is only conditioned on being uncorrelated if they are uncorrelated of course we know that uh, cxi xj will always give you zero for different x and j of course if you compare if you, if you want to find cxi xi for the variable itself then you have the variance the covariance of a variable with itself give you the variance so now out of this summation we'll get only one sum because all other values would be equal to zero and then if i equal to j which will convert this into one sum we'll get alpha i squared and then we can say instead of cx i six j six i x j we can say just the variance so the conclusion that we make here that just like the mean of the weighted sum is equal to the weighted sum of the means Similarly, we can say that the variance of a weighted sum of uncorrelated, uncorrelated random variables, this is a condition, weighted alpha i, equals to the weight sum or the weighted sum of the variances. So please keep this equation in your mind, because this equation will tell us how to find the variance of uh, the weighted sum. Just give me the weights, and I can give you the output weight. Okay, so this can also be compared with the case of sum of iid. What if all variables are iid, which means independent, identically distributed? In that case, we'll have sigma xi is just one sigma. It goes outside the summation. Then we get, of course, sigma x goes outside the summation. And if we have all the same weights, we can get the same answer that we had before, where the, where the variance will be scaled by n. Okay, if you make the, all the weights equal to one, for example, this goes away. If we make all the variables the same, then sigma x goes outside. And then we have the sum of one times n. We get n times sigma x squared. For this case, we get n times sigma x squared. So this is more general compared with the case of sum of iid. Now, Let's look at, since we looked at the joint relation, joint expectation, let's look also at the joint characteristic functions. Uh, just like we define the characteristic function for a single random variable, we can define the joint characteristics. It's just generalization. It will look at a bit bigger in terms of expressions. So phi, which is the characteristic function, is now function of two variables. It's not just omega. We have omega 1 and omega 2. I'm using the color here to distinguish and to help you out um, follow up. So instead of the expected value of either j or omega x, we have two variables. Now, if you want to perform uh, the expectation, then you have double integration. Double integration. Of course, if you have three variables, it becomes triple integration. We can also find the, the inverse relation. We can get the PDF from the characteristic function. Those are generalization, maybe not to be memorized uh, uh, directly, but you just learn the concept. And now we can also go, uh, if you want to find the moment from these characteristic functions, <coughs> we can also do the same. <coughs> from the joint characteristic function, we are um, we can find the marginal, just like we have marginal PDF, joint PDF, we can also define the marginal uh, characteristic function by substituting omega 2 equal to 0, or by substituting omega 1 equal to 0. That's straightforward. Of course, giving the joint, you can find the moments now it looks a bit more complicated. You need partial differentiation and to the order of the required moments. So we have joint moments. We have of order n k 
k n comma k if you like then we have to differentiate uh, with respect to omega n times and or with respect to omega 2 k times once you are done with the differentiation you substitute omega 1 and omega 2 equal to 0 and then we have to scale with minus j we can do a similar thing with the moment generating function the idea is just to open up your mind for the generalization now let's conclude this section this part with the following exercise once more please if you know the answer write your answer down in the comment section for the different parts so it says here two random variables x and y have means x bar equal to 1 y bar equal to 2 we are given the means and then we are told that the variances are 4 and 1 the correlation coefficient is equal to 0.4 okay would like you to get new random variables w and v by the following transformation this is simple straightforward we're not looking at pdf we'll look at transformation later on so for the new random variables this is just uh, simple mathematical operations we have v and w for the new variables what would be the new means i think this is this part is easy so you can just take the expected value of both sides and then we'd like you to get the variance and then the correlation the variances we have two variances for correlation we have just one very one correlation between v and w and once you get the correlation you should be able to get uh, the correlation coefficient okay you expect of course to have some correlation because both of them are coming from the same original variable so good luck with this exercise please write your answers a b c and d and let's compare our answers together with the high probability we'll get the right answer thank you very much for being good listeners and we'll see you in coming videos